this is going to get loud. Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the last video we did the diesel heater install. Um, you may be able to hear it cruising away back there. I'm really super excited about having this in the van. But we need to build, I guess, an enclosure for it. Um, not only to keep stuff from knocking into the diesel heater, but also to basically have, be the other half of what will become a sleeping platform. So let's get cracking on that. So I've already started some of the cuts. Just kind of wanted to see how things were going to go. And I'll tell you right now, it's not pretty. <laughs> I am not a builder. I'm just kind of largely basing what I'm doing on how this one was set up. You know, the last week or so, you know, we've had the bed platform in there sitting on top of this and then storage totes on this side. Well, diesel heater's in here, so I can't use my storage totes anymore, so I gotta build something else to keep the sleeping platform on. And that's where we are. So, I'm pretty much setting it up, kind of how this one's set up, you know, structurally it seems to be okay. So I figured, why not? So here we go. Like I said, I've already done some cutting. I only got three boards cut so far, and I did cut and make a little extra support for that tank because I wasn't overly confident about the fact that once I get four gallons of diesel in that thing, that those screws are gonna hold into that tongue and groove wall. Um, so I just built a little, you know, a little extra support for that tank, so hopefully it doesn't fall over on me when I'm driving. Um, so basically I'm gonna come 16 inches out this way and it'll actually end up being what, probably 17 and a half, I guess, by the time I get it all done. I'm making my initial cuts on these boards right here, 16 inches. So I got 16 inches here, another 16 inches that's gonna go up there, and then that small board right there is a nine and a half inch cut because that's going to be pressed up against the fender wall which loses about six and a half inches to the actual wall and i'm going to have another strip that's going to connect to with all three of those for the outer border which is going to be about 70 inches long um, my plan at this point is to go with a full-size mattress um, i was originally going to put in a queen um, you know, a little extra comfort for whenever me and Barb over at Wintel's Easer, Easel can, you know, mash up and get camping together. Um, but when I did the measurements for our queen size mattress, um, it's pretty much going to go all the way to my sliding door. Um, now granted, a full size bed's only about five inches shorter. Five inches is five in inches, right? I mean, we gotta take our space where we can find it. So, you know, an extra five inches of counter space is gonna be probably very much welcome when everything's said and done. So we're just gonna go with a full size bed and it's just gonna have to work. See, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even find a pencil or anything, so using a razor knife just to kind of notch the wood so I can get a mark that I can see to start with. And put the square on there, line it up on my mark, and then just cut a shallow line in the wood as our cut line. This is going to get loud. Not what I wanted. Let's try that again. 
problem I'm finding with this particular saw is these marks that are on the plate here that are supposed to show you where the blade's going to be, as best I can tell, aren't entirely accurate. Just making cuts right now, I'm not tying anything in with screws. Um, bought a box of screws and used them so far to build that little support structure for the diesel tank. Then I'm finding that the screws that I got are gonna be a wee bit long for what we're doing here. I mean, I got three inch screws and really they only need to be two and a half inches, maybe two, two and a half inches, somewhere in there. So I'm just getting cuts done right now. Um, so the idea with this plan is, so a full size mattress in case some of your of the math on this one, I said I'm cutting these to 70 inches for a full-size mattress. So full-size mattress is 75 inches. But I want to inset the mattress a little bit into the door area right here. Um, and so I measured that out and it's actually almost a little over five inches. So, so I'm building the support area at 70 and then the platform will just hang over into the door area by about five inches or so. And then we're gonna come up to 27 inches to match the current height of this structure on this side. So what I need to do two of these together here. You know you construction types are probably rolling around right now laughing your asses off on how failure this is gonna be, but again, you're not the one that's in here I am. Um, yeah, so the reason why I wanted to go ahead and measure it is because I know that when the sign on the lumber says 2x2, two two, it's not actually 2x2, two two. it's smaller than that. I couldn't remember what it was, so they were actually about an inch and a half by an inch and a half, because two, two of them together um, is three inches, so you know, if I would have known that going and in buying screws, I would have just got two and a half to begin with. Oh well, here we are. So let's stop to make another trip back into town. All right, so day two of getting the structure built to number one, frame in where the diesel heater's currently sitting. And two, also, get some elevation for the other half of where the sleeping platform is going to be. Let's jump back into it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, so yesterday I was using a circular saw to try to make the cuts I've done so far. Well, little did I know that there was also <laughs> a chop saw in the garage. I wasn't aware. Who would have thought something this big could be so well hidden? So, things are gonna get fun now. All right, so back from the store, picked me up some 3 8 inch plywood that we're gonna use for the mattress area. Um, also stopped and picked up some drawers too. I was kind of in the air if I was going to do it or not, but 
I figured why not, you know, they're just cheap little plastic ones. I'm pretty much just after I get the platform put in, I'm just kind of set those up against the wall over here. Um, and then screw them into the floor and keep them closed with bungee cords. So that's the plan. Now that the platform's installed and done, now we're going to move on to getting these drawers secured and fastened so that they don't move around, um, get things set up to where drawers don't fly open. Basically, they're just the little plastic Sterilite drawers, just, you know, something to give me a little bit more, uh, you know, ease of access to some of the things that I need to use more regularly than others than just trying to dig stuff out of totes the way I have been the last, you know, week or two. So, you know, just going to screw them into the floor as they are and then just run some bungee cords around the front of the drawers to help keep them closed while we're moving. Really super simple. Let's take a look. So I think that's how I'm going to position them. Um, there's a chunk of rib right there that comes out from the wall. So I don't want to push them all the way up against the framing because then they'll be sticking out at an angle. And it kind of gives me a little tuck space if I want to put anything down in there. So, so what we're going to do we're gonna start with just running screws into the bottoms, just straight into the floor. And then I've got these little hook things that I'm gonna put one there, one there, and down there. So that way we can run bungees across the front of all three of these drawers. more hooks on that side for them to go into on that end and then and then and then what I hope is after I got these fastened down and everything set in there I've actually got a scrap piece of plywood that I'm gonna see if I might have to cut it down a little bit more to get it to fit in here just having a piece of plywood fastened to the top of these drawers to kind of give me a little bit of makeshift countertop space for you know something more solid than just plastic. 
All right, so the screws that I got looks like aren't long enough to go into the sides, so I think I'll probably end up just attaching them right to the front. If I can get a year out of these drawers, I'm doing pretty damn good. Wheels. Garbage. <laughs> a bit maybe yep, it's on there cool That's pretty much all of this weekend's projects done. Um, solar. I know I said at the start of this project run that solar was on my list of things to do. Um, ironically, solar just kind of resolved itself. All I had to do was get power into the batteries. And I actually used the Multi Plus. That's that big box, the inverter charger. I actually plugged that into the house outlet and kicked it on it fired up started charging got the batteries to 100 percent and ever since then the batteries have stayed at 100 percent um everything's working the charge controller's working so i think we just had to get power into the batteries so that the batteries could actually feed power to those systems um for everything to function so yay all right so thank you so much for tuning in i'm going to go ahead and get everything cleaned up uh i need to get those totes organized and figure out what i'm going to put in these drawers um i suspect the next video will probably be probably be a van tour of some sorts i mean you pretty much have seen the van everything up to this point but you know after we get everything in it you can kind of see how i've got stuff positioned what i've got put where what's going in these drawers what i'm using what i'm not using things like that so again thanks for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>